Rivian is a lot of things. We make adventure vehicles, but I think more importantly, we're here to change the way that people's relationship is to transportation, to the outdoors, to energy use in general. The r and is the beginning of the adventure for Rivian. This is our first vehicles to market. It's our first flagship product. When you take a clean sheet platform like the R1 platform is, you can create kind of anything. So it gives us a lot of freedom to basically integrate the latest and greatest technology and really offer the best experience to our customers. We have an incredibly powerful compute platform. Immediately, I wanted to get Unreal Engine, whether it's in the driver display or in the center display. We want to be able to render things in unique ways that you haven't seen inside of automobiles. The sensor view of the world around you really has to build trust with the end user. And from a user experience standpoint, it's job one. Job two is to tell me, you can't change lanes right now because there's a car right beside you. When we evaluated Unreal Engine, we compared that to other solutions. The results showed was Unreal Engine was the most performant and it had the best graphics. It had the highest quality, so it was an easy decision. HMI is literally the human-machine interface. It's how we as people interact with a product like an automobile. So here are the challenges with HMI. Safety, so you don't want to distract people. You don't want to give them too much information, too little information. There is occlusion. What happens with your steering wheel? What happens with your hands when your hands cover the screen? What happens when your seat is low? What happens when your seat is high? There's glare. What happens when the sunlight hits a certain angle? Does it shine into your eyes? So you just can't start with a graphic design and say, this is really cool, and then make it a driving interface. It's so much more complex than that. We love working with partners who can iterate with us while obviously keeping a very high bar in terms of safety, reliability, and quality and it took a lot of iterations. How much was too much? Are we overwarning people? Really quickly, we dialed it in using Unreal Engine. The fact that we could bring designers and engineers into the same platform, we'll talk about some feedback one day, and the next day we have a change ready. That was just so exciting that you go from like concept to trying it out in a day or two. When it comes to the content coming out of Unreal Engine, those cars need to match reality as close as possible to build trust with the user. Because Unreal could handle all the polygons, we just kept the original data. And not having to rebuild that from scratch, that was a huge time saver. It also made the vehicle really accurate. And so it's not a simulation of one of our vehicles. It's actually our vehicle that's running there in your driver display in real time. The R1T on screen actually has a budget of about 500,000 polygons. Pretty crazy that we can get away with it on embedded hardware. I think the, the main advantage that Unreal Engine brought us is really velocity from a development standpoint. I mean, once we have the 3D representation of the car, the speed of development really allows us to enable more and more use cases in a very fast way. One example that we iterated on in Blueprints a lot was the lanes. Drawing a spline on screen that represents the road curvature there's a lot of math involved to convert the data that you receive from the cameras into the engine. We had to go through multiple iterations until we got it right. We couldn't have figured that out if we weren't using blueprints to prototype. This is really the first use case of Unreal Engine. We have the advantage of having a deep over-the-air update solution. So there's more and more exciting updates coming. Whether it's in the driver display or in the center display for safety, for entertainment, all of that headroom that Unreal affords us is a real gift. I am super proud with what the team has done. We're not only thinking about the auto as it is today, we're thinking about the future. The stuff that we are now imagining, it's something that you will have never seen in a vehicle before. And that's exciting to me.